Allah will make things okay. So when did you really feel the attraction towards Islam? I remember in 2008, as a non-Muslim, I was stranded in Gaza, under siege with those people who are still under siege to this day. And it was Ramadan, and I saw that the people were doing kind deeds for each other, even though they were poor. So I thought one day, let me do a kind deed and take some lamb to a family in Rafa refugee camp. So I took this food to a Muslim family in a refugee camp. The mother opened the door, Tafadel, salam alaikum. So full of light and noor, and she was living in a cell, nothing to eat, nothing to drink. And I said to her, why? you fasting? I said, I don't think your God loves you. I'm sorry to say it. I don't think he does. Why does he make you a Gazan thirsty for 30 days when on day 31, do you have water? She's like, no, we don't have water. I'm like, well, so what then? On day 30 days, you in Gaza, you're going without food. Day 31, is your fridge going to be full? She said, no, it will not be full. I said, well then, your God doesn't love you. You know, give me one good reason why you're fasting. And she said, in a room of nothing, I fast in Ramadan to remember the poor. And that I thought at that moment, if this is Islam, let me be Muslim. Because if there is a faith where you can believe in God and be grateful when you, he's given you nothing that day, if there is a faith where you have one bowl of food and you give it to a stranger, oh my God, wow. This must be it. This must be it. You said that they gave you the Quran. And then what happened? Did you read it? So I had this holy Quran given to me as a gift and I opened it one day when my children were at work and I thought, okay, I'll wash my hands. I know they wash their hands and this is a very serious book. I took it seriously. It wasn't my scripture, but it was a scripture. It might be a real scripture. So let me read it with respect. So I read Al-Fatiha and I thought, okay, that's like the Lord's Prayer. Same thing. Worship God alone. Ask him alone. Thank him alone. Don't be evil. Do good. I'm fine. So Surah Al-Fatiha was fine. It was in line with my Christian beliefs, but then came Surah Baqarah and you get to before it says there are those who say that they are believers but in their heart is hypocrisy and you know they know they're not telling the truth and Allah hates the liars I mean basically it was calling me out on my hypocrisy and telling me that I was going to go to the hellfire because I believed in God but I wasn't doing anything about it and I was making bad decisions and not being a good person and not worshipping and not bothered about it and I was lying and I closed the Quran and I thought oh my God I had this cold feeling. It was a hot day, but it, absolute terror. And for me, the Quran was terrifying. So I took it and I put it on a high shelf and I thought, wow, nice people, crazy book. Because I'd never seen God so angry before. And he was angry at me. Did you get dawah from Muslims? I did get dawah actually from one place during my journey. There was one group of people who were very specific with me. Do you know who they were? Somali taxi drivers. They don't mess. They don't give like la 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 la. And I found them giving me dawah. So I would say assalamu alaikum because I'd been to Palestine and I thought that meant hello. And they say, Wa alaikum salam. Are you Muslim? No, but I'm interested. Oh boy, be careful because you are going to get, you're going to get a durs right there. You're going to get a khutbah from your driver. And I really enjoyed them. And so they would say, well, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to Aisha, da 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 da. And I was learning about this amazing, this wonderful man who'd lived 1400 years ago in an Arabian desert and couldn't read or write, but taught people to change themselves and change the world. And I, I fell in love with Muhammad, peace be upon him.